welcome back. Today we are going to paint our kitchen cabinets and while this can be a little intimidating, I am super ready to start this project. So we've been waiting to do our kitchen cabinets for quite some time and we thought about paying a professional, but that can be very expensive. So this kitchen is in need of a new facelift, um, but the cabinets themselves are in great shape. So painting kitchen cabinets may not be the fastest DIY project, but we took dedicated time off and, you know, to get it done and a lot of planning and research. Uh, so even though I painted two bathroom cabinets before, I feel like the kitchen cabinets um, is a little bit of a different story. So I'm super excited to share this cabinet makeover, makeover with you guys, along with some tips I've learned while I've been doing my research. So grab a snack or a cup of coffee, whatever you like, and hang out with us for a little bit. So let's get this party started. Are you ready? Yes, I am. <laughs> All right, so the first step is to label the doors and drawers. I first put a piece of painter's tape on all doors, starting at the upper left and then right. This is a very important step when you have to put everything back in place because if this step is skipped at the end of the project, you would be playing the matching game and that is not fun. I've done that before when I did the bathroom. <laughs> and then I went back and I put numbers on each um, tape that I had placed on the doors. So finally, once everything is labeled, Merv removed the doors and I removed the hardwares and I placed each door hinge in a Ziploc bag and labeled them the same way I labeled the doors. Um, and I was trying to move as fast as possible. So once Merv take one door down, I'm onto the next one. And then I moved the painter's tape where the hinge sits um, and placed another piece of tape on top of that. This um, is for when we paint the cabinets. As for the other piece of tape on top of the numbered ones, that protects the number from paint when um, I spray. I can just take that top piece off and see the numbers and know where to put the doors back. I know it seems like a lot of work, but it helps a whole lot when you get ready to put everything back in place. <laughs> This was the easiest way for me to keep all my hinges together so I don't lose anything or lose any screws. <laughs> and the reason why we are actually um, protecting the cabinets like this is because we're gonna sand and I don't want any dust to get in there because we didn't remove any dishes or anything like that. So that's why we're not spraying in here. I would love to, but it would have been way more prep work. So this is a very crucial step in the process to make sure that we clean and degrease the cabinets from any cooking grease or build up residue. And we use crud cutter and it's my first time using this product and oh my gosh, this product is amazing. Not sponsored by the way, I just love it. I started using it on pretty much everything that has grease on it. <laughs> and um, it just works so, so good. Good morning, welcome to day two. Yesterday we started at 12 o'clock. We finished around 7.30 and that was just with prep work. So taping off everywhere, um, taking down the doors, taking off the hinges, um, degreasing the doors and all of that good stuff. So. Yeah, that's pretty much all we did yesterday, but it was really time consuming. And honestly, we should have started earlier, but that's fine. That was just the prep day. So today we are going to start by sanding and hopefully priming. I didn't realize how many doors we have until we took them off and started cleaning them. Every time we think we we're done, there was more. <laughs> but yeah, Merv is making breakfast. So, eggs. Eggs. <laughs> so, I'm gonna wait for him to finish making his eggs and then we start with sanding. How cool is this little sander? <laughs> The next step is to lightly sand the cabinets and we use a 220 grit sanding block. This will degloss the finish and ensure proper paint bond.
my handy dandy tack cloth one thing I must mention really quick is that I gathered all the supplies I know we would need um, in one spot that way we didn't have to stop we didn't have to run out and get stuff and that would make us lose a lot of time <laughs> Here I go with another unboxing. <laughs> I like how this comes in this thing. When we use it, we can just put it right back. Spray poster. So complicated. I don't know if I'm gonna know how to use it. Comes with this one, this one. Okay, so that's pretty much. Ooh, this is why it is. Short. Look at this. Why is it so short? I saw that's in here. Okay, almost time to start. <laughs> Suit it up. So this is my first time using a paint sprayer and I had no idea what I was doing. It took me probably like two hours to actually get started spraying. Two precious hours that I lost <laughs> because I had to practice and make sure I wasn't getting any overspray and I finally figured it out. I actually started out using the one and a half quart cup first and I could not figure out the nozzle and I got fed up. It was super complicated for me and time was going by so I just went ahead and used a detailed finish nozzle instead and that went by pretty smoothly after that. Oh, and we originally set up this production line in the garage to spray all the doors on, but then we decided to spray the doors one by one on this round table. And as I finished spraying, Merv brought the door inside to a more dust-free work area. And then for the inside, I use a zebra two inch brush and Merv used the Wooster brush. He likes this brush for some reason. And we also use the microfiber roller. We did the brush and roll method and we made sure to use a tack cloth for any extra dust before we started painting as well. All right, Merv. Here goes everything. As far as a primer, I was originally going to use a Zinzer Bin primer, but because I was purchasing the Benjamin Moore Advanced Paint, I made a last-minute decision in the store to go with the Benjamin Moore Waterborne Interior Alkalite Primer, which claimed to have excellent leveling, and that's all I really cared about in the moment. And also, I thought it was a good idea to use the same brand primer. In the past, I used a high density foam roller, but the microfiber paint roller is amazing. It gives the cabinet a very smooth finish and I wanted to make sure the cabinets look like it was professionally done. <laughs> the foam rollers tend to leave small bubbles, which is not ideal for trying to get a smooth surface. So yeah, I was very, very pleased with this microfiber paint roller.
good morning so this is day four and last night we got in here primed um didn't really plan on doing two coats of primer but we're gonna go ahead and add a second coat so this is what it's look like right now So we lightly buff the cabinets with a 220 grit sanding block after the first coat of primer. And in the meantime, while the second coat of primer was left to dry, I sprayed the front side of the doors with the primer. I started with the back side of the doors first, just in case I messed up, at least it would be the back side. <laughs> and I wouldn't care that much. <laughs> I'm lying, I would care. The color we went with in the Benjamin Moore Advanced Paint is Natural Cream in the satin finish. And I researched the heck out of what paint is the best for kitchen cabinets and that's how I end up with the Advanced. The advantage of the Benjamin Moore Advanced is that it dries amazingly smooth. We had no brush strokes and no bubbles from the, um, the roller and it's an alkali paint and has excellent leveling. I love, love, love this paint. It's not sponsored, but I would love to. I love this paint. <laughs> this zebra triangle detail brush works well for the small edges and corners. Honestly, the zebra brushes are my favorite brushes so far. I don't want anyone to use them or touch them. I tried to get Murph to use it, but he didn't care. So like, whatever. <laughs> I was mindful of every drip, like make sure to look out for all of the drips so we can um, touch them right away. I would even go over there to see what Merv is doing. I'm like, make sure we don't have any drips. <laughs> and then I didn't even have to dip my roller that much. I just made sure to keep rolling everything that's already in a brush. And the good thing about the microfiber brushes, they hold a lot of paint so you don't have to keep dipping. And yeah, pretty cool. All right, so we are going to go ahead and start sanding down the doors with the 220 grit sandpaper um, to prepare it for the first coat of paint. Coat. <laughs> coat, coat. I can never say it. <laughs> Mary's going to use this nice, soft microfiber cloth to dust off after we sand. Ready to go, 220 sandpaper. Now I'm starting on the back side of the doors with the paint and I actually felt like I was getting somewhere at this point and we let each side of the doors dry overnight so I know it's fully dry before we buffed and paint again so that was the process and honestly waiting for the paint to dry is what took most of the time in this process between that and the prep work um, but it's totally worth it so yeah. So the next day we had an early start. I did the front part of the cabinet doors, um, started around like nine o'clock, which was a pretty decent time. How rude is this moth? <laughs> it's so important to take dedicated time off to do this type of um, project. This is not a weekend project at all. Especially if you want to get it done the right way, it's best to just take some time off, which is what we did. Now 
now we are done with the inside and I am so, so happy that part is over with. Uh, Merv is just dusting. Uh, I guess there was extra dust on here. Um, and then we had extra dust on the walls from sanding. So we're just cleaning up. And then we are finally changing this boob light. Oh my gosh. You guys know how I feel about the boob lights. I don't care for them at all. And it took me so long to actually find the perfect light for over this sink. Merv wanted to get those little flush lights. I'm like, that's too boring. And so um, we found something that I really, really like. This microwave is so, so heavy. And here I go again with the crud cutter. I found every reason to use the crud cutter, but the microwave had some grease, so I made sure to use it on here. If you haven't used crud cutter before, it's amazing. It's as good as awesome. And I love awesome too, but the crud cutter, it's like, what? After all this heavy lifting and stuff, <laughs> I have the last coat of paint to put on the door. So I'm gonna put the second coat of paint now and then I'll be done. Oh my gosh. Finally, boy, my arms been killing me. Like I sleep in a brace since I've been doing this because I want to keep my hands straight. Um, yeah, and hoping for it to not hurt the next day when I have to do, you know, the coat of paint. But yeah. So now we are lightly buffing the front of the doors for the final coat of paint and I was so ready to get this over with. <laughs> Two days later after we spray the last coat of paint we are now ready to reinstall our doors and Merv had a little trouble reinstalling them because whoever installed them in the first place did not have them leveled and our eyes didn't even see that before we painted so <laughs> yeah that was kind of irritating. I found this little cute light on Amazon and it matches the hardwares that we're gonna put on the doors. So perfect and it's just so cute. <laughs> Whoever invented this hardware installation template, shout out to you because it makes our lives so much easier to install hardwares. I can't even imagine putting hardwares on anymore without this. And I also got these knobs from Amazon. They came in a pack of 10. I pretty much got everything from Amazon. I made sure to gather everything we needed for the project so I didn't have to leave the house once we got started and that saved a lot of time. All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some quarter rounds to this part of the cabinet, the, um, the edge of it. <laughs> whatever that's called it looks so incomplete um well clearly it is incomplete because apparently the um previous homeowners they didn't finish up the cabinets by adding um crown molding at the top right there um and then these little parts that we're gonna add the quarter rounds that's not finished it just looks incomplete so since my cabinets look so professionally done i want it to be fully completed so i'm trying to get someone to do the crown molding make the crown moldings um for me um by the way even like my um underneath my my oven there was no doors there and i got a friend of the family that made the doors i'm gonna show you guys too made the doors for those so i'm really excited about that um, i just have to paint it the same color but right now what i'm gonna do is go ahead and add the crown not crown i'm gonna go ahead and add the um quarter rounds and i picked this up at lowe's by the way it was so difficult trying to find this by the way i went there before and i couldn't find anything they were just all so thick i ordered some on amazon um, that was a sticky one it came and I did not like it I returned it because it was just way too thick it didn't look good and I just want like a little I want it to be like pretty neat and just flush with the cabinets if you know what I mean and um, I'm trying to decide if I should keep this white or I should paint it the same color of the cabinet um, but I think I'm gonna paint it. <laughs> I think that will make more sense because I, when I tried it, let me just move this out of the way really quick. Um, my plant, my lucky bamboo. All right, so I, right there, this is what it would look like if it's 
you probably can't even see from so far but this is what it will look like if I just leave it white I don't think it looks that good my husband thinks I should just leave it white to match like the window tr um, trims and stuff but I'm gonna change it I'm just gonna color color it like it's a coloring book I'm gonna paint it the same color as the cabinet because from right here uh, let me let you guys see it up close all right so this is it up close close enough <laughs> and this is what it looks like if I just leave it white um, it looks good right here because of the white um, next to the window but I'm not sure I think I'm just gonna paint it but anyways we're gonna go ahead and measure and cut and then paint and then I can put it up after and this is uh oh my new light this is what it looks like up close and it's pretty bendable is that a word um, yes this is what it looks like up close so let's measure let me show you guys how all of it look right like, what it looked like up close and then I'll start measuring cutting painting and get on with it <laughs> that's what it looks like um, up close it doesn't look completed and I don't want it to look like that because it just don't look good <laughs> and this is below the oven that didn't have a door and now I have a door let me show you guys Now we are ready to do our backsplash but first this granite backsplash I gotta go and this side was surprisingly easy to remove This side was a little more challenging considering we didn't even have all the right tools but we used what we had and it worked. Surprisingly it didn't take Merv that long. I thought it would be super difficult but just a couple places of the sheetrock got damaged but I patched it and we were good to go. We didn't even plan on doing the backsplash honestly. I knew I wanted to do it but not right now but I'm glad we just went ahead and took care of it. Here is something else to make life easier. This is a double-sided adhesive tile mat that replaces difficult to use mortar. Shout out to Jackie of All Trades here on YouTube that told me about this. By the way, Jackie, because of you, I was motivated to go ahead and do the backsplash because my original plan was to do peel and stick, but when I went to buy the peel and stick, they were not very cute, so I decided to just do the original tile. <laughs> Oh, I'm getting a little real video really quick. Real, really quick. <laughs> Feel free to follow me on Instagram too. This tie looks very organic and that's the style I really wanted. When we first went tie shopping, we got something different and then I went to bed and woke up and I'm like, you know what? I don't really care for this tile. And surprisingly, Merv felt the same way. I'm like, perfect. Let's go and exchange it. And originally when we went to buy the tile the first time, they didn't have this one. And I'm so happy we returned the other one just to get this because this is the look I had in my mind. Just in case you're wondering, this tile comes in a box of 24 and we end up using five boxes for this space. And finally, it's time to grout. FYI, this is my first time doing this. It was a little difficult when I started and then I got the hang of it. 
I also picked up this ready to use grout because I didn't want to try to figure out to mix grout. So there were no mixing or sealing required, which is super easy for me. I did this in sections and when it came time to use my damp sponge, I rinsed my sponge frequently and changed the water because keeping the water and sponge clean will reduce haze and achieve uniform joints and better color consistency. And this is in the color bright white by the way and I did not pour my grout water in the sink. I kept going back and forth outside to pour the water out and changing it. And guys, here it is. It's the final reveal time. so happy with the way the kitchen turned out i hope you guys enjoyed watching this transformation we still have to add the crown moldings and the floor in the future i'm glad we didn't pay a professional because we saved money and we did it like a professional anyway <laughs> it was just a lot of work but well worth it so thank you so much for watching please don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you want to see more makeovers and see you all in the next video